rise and shine with Dr. Nina. This is your breakfast show. Giving glory to the Father. Get your day on the go. Wake up with Dr. Nina. Get your word and your prayer. Giving thanks unto the Father. That's how we'll start our day. Rise and shine. Wake up with Dr. Nina. 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 Good morning, guys. <laughs> Good morning, guys, and welcome to Wake Up With Dr. Nina, better known as the Praying Prophetess. Yes, you guys should be ready. You should have already have your notification bells on, so you do not need to be like, oh my gosh, it is 6 o'clock. No, you should have already subscribed and have that notification bell on so that we can jump into today's session. Good morning and welcome. Listen, guys, you see I'm showing off. I'm showing off. There's nothing wrong with a little showing off. Listen, you got to go to Inspire Print and get your mugs listen you can order yours with wake up with dr nina but anyway let's jump into today's session but let's give god thanks first father we thank you for what you are doing we thank you for this amazing session we thank you lord god for this program in the name of jesus we give you thanks lord god we are so blessed because of you we are so blessed lord god i give you all the honor and all the praise all the glory take it lord god take all the glory because it belongs to you oh god i'm a mere vessel who just desired, Lord God, to be used. Not a perfect vessel, Lord God, not a perfect person, Lord God, but a woman who is on her way, Lord God, daily seeking you, Lord God, for that transformation in every area, Lord God, that needs transformation in the name of Jesus. So listen, guys, I'm, I'm, I just want to give a shout out and a good morning, a special good morning to all my DVA family um, and to those that's watching. I saw uh, we have persons here from America. I saw that we have persons um, watching from around the world. So I just want to say good morning to all of you fans of Wake Up With Dr. Nina. Uh, I just love you guys so much. Um, I see your comments. I read your comments. So keep commenting, keep sharing. I indeed see them. I indeed read them. I don't always get to respond, but you know, of course, I read them. I'm going to actually get small clippings of them and show them to you, you know, that I am reading and all of that. So keep messaging and i love you guys so much too thank you for all the love and the support it's been such an amazing time and you know just an amazing season to be having wake up with dr nina as one uh, person put it it is on time it is well needed and so uh i am here so let's get into today i hope that you were blessed from yesterday's session you know we spoke about you are perfect for god's help and you know, uh, last week we talked about do not discount yourself. And I said, you are perfect for God's help. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter what anyone told you. It doesn't matter what family background you have. It doesn't matter if your family came from the riches of the heights. It doesn't matter because let me tell you, it doesn't matter because you have people with all types of issues, no matter the social background. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think you have done. It doesn't matter what anybody's pointing the finger at you and say you have done it doesn't matter you are perfect for god's help amen if you will only allow him to help you you see i was helped because i allowed him to help me I did not say, Lord God, I have a problem and you do not have the word to help me. You can help me. So I allowed him to help me. So I want to jump into today's session, but I just want to give God thanks um, for my husband. I just want to say I honor you, my husband, uh, Dr. Andre Thomas, our very own prophet, AG Ambassador, Dr. Andre Thomas. I love you so much and thank you so much for watching these videos as well, you know, and feeling like, wow, like this is my wife has stepped into something different, something great. And I thank you so much for all your encouragement. Uh, you are my first, per you're the first person, of course, outside of the Holy Spirit who motivates me and encourages me to do all that I do. And so I thank you. You know, once I share a vision with you from the Lord, you never stop me and say, is this or is that? You know, you always push me. You always root for me. You always do the right things by me. In other words, you don't push me to do evil. You don't push me to do bad things. You push me always to improve. Even if you may see something in me that needs to change, you know, you always inspire me to change and not to go left as in evil. Okay. So thank you so much. And 
I love you. Let's get into today's topic. Oh my, this is going to be a big one, but it's also going to be a quick one because I have to stay at the time. I have to stick to the time, guys. Listen, I know you know that we are what? It's May 3rd, Wednesday. Anybody know what's happening? You should know by now what's happening. <laughs> the big 5 is coming up. So go over to my Activated Women um, Instagram and you can watch all my series there where I'm talking about 20 things that impacted my life. Uh, I wanted to, it to be 50, but the birthday is on, is on May 20th. Let's get into today's topic. And don't forget to comment below how you're feeling this morning. Send me some love. I'm sending you back love, 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 love. I'm sending you kisses mwah, 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 to all of you. Send me back some love, send me back some kisses. Don't forget to hit that like button. That's so important when you're having these shows. Hit the like button. It takes nothing off of you to share. Share. Let that be your first seed. Let's get into it because I have to stick to this 30 minutes today. Amen. So today I want to talk to you about the invisible enemy of your destiny. My God, the invisible, come on, type it. The invisible enemy of your destiny, the invisible enemy of your destiny. I want to talk about that because I realize that this, this, uh, invisible enemy, it affects and has affected so many of us and it still to this day affects us. So we want to talk about it. And so even if I have to share a sec tomorrow on this topic, because I want to stick to the time that we will pick up as usual, you know, you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Glory be to God. So let's get into it. The invisible enemy of your destiny and the invisible enemy of your destiny. Let me just take you to a scripture here. Then you will get it. Let me take you to the scripture here. Then you will get it. Romans uh, 12, 2 says, and it says here, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You already know where I'm going with this. He said, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, I'm not going to break down the good, the pleasing, and perfect. I can break that down, but that's not what this morning is about. Amen. I want now to go back and share this with you. Who can tell me where I'm going already? Who can tell me where we are? Uh, are you up? Are you up? I hope that you're up. Be up somebody. Be up. Stop stretching. Whatever you need to do. Listen, even as you're getting dressed to go out the door, put on wake up with Dr. Nina. Even if you're brushing your teeth, do what I do. I take my phone, prop it nicely that it doesn't get wet there. And I take it in there when I'm like brushing my teeth and doing all that. If it is a program and I'm putting my makeup, when I'm applying my makeup, my phone is there. If it's a program I'm listening to, I must continue to learn and grow at every aspect. Sometimes if I'm like quickly doing something, you know, in our spare room, I would have the phone there and I'm also being fed. Now, who can tell me what that invisible enemy is? The invisible, the invisible enemy of our destiny is not, none other than our thoughts. Come on, somebody, none other than our thoughts. Because a lot of times, those thoughts are what? Invisible to, uh, to others. Like, in other words, other persons can't necessarily read your thoughts. So the invisible enemy of your thoughts is of your, the invisible enemy of your destiny is what? It is your thoughts. Because thoughts have presence. I'm just reading what I wrote here. Thoughts have presence. Your thoughts have what? Presence. It's why sometimes you walk into a room and you could already know if somebody was either talking about you. Come on, somebody. You could know somebody was just talking about you, lying on you. You could already know if they have a bad attitude towards you and they have not said a word. You could already know if that room, that, that when you walk into that room, you already can feel the atmosphere is what? The atmosphere is filled with lies, gossip, anything that is terrible but now if it changes to be good thoughts happy you know godly love you can walk in as well and you can feel that because what the persons are operating in that room they are what peaceful thoughtful loving kind you know you can feel of that thoughts have presence whatever they're thinking if you come into my space any of my space you feel uh, the presence of worship prayer you feel love if you walk in a day where i'm so upset <laughs> you can get upset as a Christian. Don't let anybody fool you now. You can get upset, but must be uh, angry and don't sin. So if I get really upset, I can be upset. Now if I go and I take my mug and smash it, ah, I'm so mad, then I just sin. 
If I go now and I say I'm driving, I'm so upset, and I press my 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 um my leg on the brake, my foot on the brake. I mean, sorry, the gas and sped up and hit somebody's car because this person is just moving too slow and I need to get to a meeting. Now I just sin. So you can get upset but not sin. So you walk into a room now and somebody's there so mad. You can feel the presence. Somebody is there just thinking some thoughts, some thoughts of lusting. You can feel that. Somebody's now thinking, having some thoughts of uh, committing adultery. You can feel that. Some, somebody's thinking about fornicating. They've been getting these dreams. They've been watching some movies that is now um, tantalizing them. And now they're beginning to feel like, whoa, I got to meet somebody or I got to be with somebody. You know, you start getting all these thoughts and these thoughts now have presence. So the enemy now, he picks up on this presence. Now, all of a sudden, you now you go somewhere that day and guess what? The enemy put you in the direction of this man that you find all attractive. He came now with all the right love language and what you think is going to happen if you are not strong you are gone you are what gone and this is for anything thoughts have presence and the enemy uses that as well thoughts have presence if we can walk into a room and we can feel that in the atmosphere can you imagine the devil he's feeling that too okay now let's look at this scripture because the enemy and uh, wait wait what we don't realize is that our thoughts uh, I had this saying that I would always write uh, uh, my statuses and so on, that our thoughts can be very deceptive because the enemy can feed you with some thoughts. A person can be appear so loving, so sweet, so kind. Oh, look at me. I'm a Bible scholar. You know, wow. And all of these things. And guess what? That person can be thinking the most wicked, evil thing. That person can be so wicked, so evil. So you have to also be able to read the room. So the person, like I have, I'm not going to even give away my secrets now, but I have this thing I do, I could be with a person. They could put on the sweetest of smile, but I don't look at that. I don't look at that. I look through the smile. I look past it. And I almost cannot, I can know the exact thought, but I can know the essence of where your thoughts are. Meaning I can know with the heart because the thoughts are going to come from the heart. I could almost know that. I remember I had an incident and I was like, man, I can feel this thing. And I often say this to my husband. I said, babe, I, this thing is going to happen. I sense it very strongly. He was like, oh, oh, this is what's, this is the direction here. I'm like, yes, I know that this is what's happening here right now. But this thing, and it made a listen and it happens. Okay, if it's something you can avoid, you pray, you, you know, but then there's some things that happen and you overcome. Amen. And so... Look at 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Do you have your Bibles? Remember, I said bring your Bibles. If you're listening to me on your phones and, I, and the Bible app is all you have and it's on your phone, then you're in trouble. Bring your Bibles. Go to 2 Corinthians 10, 5, where it says we break down every thought and proud thing that puts itself up against the wisdom of God. We take hold of every thought and make it obey Christ. Second Corinthians 10, 5. I want to read it from this other translation. I want you to get it this morning. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture the rebellious thoughts. So you see what happened? Thoughts are, when well, you don't have godly thoughts, thoughts of peace, thoughts of building, thoughts of good communication, thoughts of good conduct. You know, you begin to have these evil thoughts. The enemy can now feed you because remember our mind is, uh, our, the, the, um, the mind is part of the soul. So our mind, remember the soul is made of the mind, your will and emotions. So the thoughts is part of the soul. It's the mind is part of the soul. So now let's look at, let's look at. Second Corinthians again. Now in this other translation, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people. So you see what it is. The thoughts come at you for a reason is to keep you from knowing the will of God. If Satan can bring his thoughts and feed you his thoughts, you will never be able to perceive the deeper things of God. You will never be able to know attract and go the bible said to, the, god said in his word that what draw on to me satan wants to break that drawing from you he wants you to draw to him because when you draw to the world you're drawing to satan remember satan is the god of this world when you draw to the things of this world you are drawing to satan so he wants to break that attention to god he wants to break that he wants you to serve him he said ah you might be going to church lifting your hands to god but i know that you're serving me because i am the one that's feeding your thoughts 
Your thoughts are built up on my thinking, not God. That's why you need to read the Bible, people. You need to get more of God in you. Somebody say more of God, less of me. Less of the world. You want less of the world. You see, there are things in the world that we can enjoy, but so that we, we should be in the world, but not of the world. So you want to be here. We live here. I mean, where are we going to live? Out of space? No, we live here. We occupy here until another time come. We occupy right here, right now. So you want to live it. You want to enjoy the things that, that you, you achieve in your, all your successes and your goals and all of these wonderful things. You know that you create. You want to enjoy that. God is not saying don't enjoy them. He said don't serve them, but you enjoy them. Okay? You know, don't go and do the evil things that you see people having these, uh, 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 some type of parties. You don't want to go there because you know that's, that's not godly. That's not of God. You see now people going out and they're setting up and they're, they're drinking till they get drunk uh, and they're having these gang ups and stuff. And you go, that is not God. So you want to live here and enjoy the goodness of the land, but not go where people are partaking of evil. You know, you see people set up these boards and now they're doing all this witchcraft. You don't partake in that. You don't partake in plotting and planning evil. You don't do that. Because if you, here's the thing. If the thought for you to now move on and, be, and, and it become an action, you must think it. You must think it. That's why you have to be so mindful. That's why we, we're going to go back to the first scripture I read at the end. You must think it. For that thing to come forth, you must think it. For you to move it to action, it must enter into your mind first. You must have that thought. You must have that thought. So when you have that thought and you don't do something about it, you now... Go and you operate on that thought. Before you move and go to make that mistake, did it not enter your mind as a thought? Before you go and commit that sin, did it not enter your mind as a thought? Before you lied, it came to you as a thought. Before you stole, it came to you as a thought. Before you go to that woman's house, it came to you as a thought. <laughs> Before you plagiarize, it came to you as a thought. Before I sat here, it came to me as a thought. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. And then I, when I put it off and procrastinated, it came back to my spirit. Everything comes first as a thought. So it came as a thought. Before I put this cup to my mouth right now. Mm, wow. <laughs> it came what? As a thought to do that. It came as a thought. Before you make that mistake, it came as a thought. It enters as a thought first. Hallelujah. Before, before Satan decided that he is going to uh, exalt one, exalt himself more than God and be like God and all of that. It came as a thought. It came as a thought. I'm going to lift myself up and exalt myself more than God. It came as a thought. Before we start being disobedient and rebellious, it came as a thought. Before we start being deceptive, it came as a thought. Before we start sowing seeds of discord, it came as a thought. All of these things came as thoughts that you did nothing with. You did nothing with because your mind needs to be renewed. They all came as thoughts. Before you decide, I'm going to dishonor. I'm going to disrespect. It came as a thought. Before you decide, I'm done. I'm no longer want to go to church. It came as a thought. Before you decide, I'm not going to read, grow and develop. It came as a thought. Before you realize I'm going to tell off my husband now. I'm going to tell off my friends. It came as a thought. When you wake up this morning, I'm not going to work. You're already thinking, excuse it. It came as a thought. It all began with a thought. Who is, the, you now have to decide where are these thoughts coming from? Do I accept them? I always go back to this. When Satan came, I knew it was the devil. And put a thought in my mind, which I will give you tomorrow, a testimony on Thursday. Put a thought in my mind. Let me tell you that thought. I began to think on that thought and move on that thought. But of course, the Holy Ghost intervened. Come tomorrow, you will hear it in the name of Jesus. I'm watching my time, guys. I'm watching my time. So it says here, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. So it's about the knowing of God. It's about the knowing of God. It's about the gnosis. It's about you going deeper, not surface. It's about, he doesn't mind if you just read and brush over the word, but he doesn't want you to pull out the pearls, the gem, the wisdom. My God, he doesn't want you to pull out that deeper revelation that will bring the total transformation to your life. He doesn't want you to know what is there for you. He doesn't want you to pull the treasures out of the word. He doesn't want you to get what's yours. He wants you always to be begging. He wants you to be jobless, homeless. He wants you 
to give up on God and say that God is not for me. How I'm a Christian servant and I have lack. He doesn't want you to know that God said that you are clothed even better than Solomon. He doesn't want you to know that God says that the birds that he feed you have to be fed too. He said the birds of the air are taken care of. The lilies of the valley are clothed. He will take care of you. He said he's concerned about you. So as a new Christian coming in, you're thinking, but I'm serving God now. I should not be broke. I should not be this. But the, so the enemy will continue to feed you with those thoughts until you get to the word. It all goes back to where the word. The Bible said in the beginning, John, in, in, um, John 1, it said in the beginning was the word. So you have to go back to what the beginning, you have to go back to what the foundation, which is the word. You know, I know people want to dismiss the word. And we want to put our own spin on the word. But the word is the word. So it continues. We capture their rebellious thoughts. You see, Satan wants your thoughts to be like his. He was rebellious. He wants us to be rebellious. He wants us to operate in, in rebellion. Then we attract witches. We become church witches. We operate as church witches. You know, because the Bible said that rebellion is as what? The sin of witchcraft. So now when we act rebellious, we act like church witches. Fle that's a fleshy witch. You know, so you have to be mindful of rebellion. It says we capture the rebellious thoughts and teach them to, uh, uh, we capture the rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey. So he wants you to disobey the word. He wants you not to know the word because here's the thing. When you don't know, you will make those mistakes. He wants you to fall to that. Let me get them thinking about my thoughts. Let me get them thinking about what they don't have. Let me get them thinking that, oh, they're now saved, but what are they saved to? We don't want you to know what are you saved to. Let me just say, okay, I'm now saved, now what? So you get frustrated in God. I'm saved, but now what? I'm going to church. I'm serving as an usher. I'm serving as an altar worker. I'm serving as a worship leader. I'm serving as a support. I'm serving as in part of the ministry. But now what, God? I still have bills to pay. He wants your mighty bill. So he will keep you on the bill level. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to somebody this morning. He will keep you on the bill thought. Oh, Lord God, I'm serving, but I'm not being paid. He will keep you on the bill thought. So then what you're supposed to receive, you will not receive it. Because he will consume your mind with the things that you don't have. But guess what? God predestined you with everything that, that is for you. So you do have. You are rich. Woman, you are rich. Woman, you are wealthy. Man, you are wealthy. We are wealthy people. My God, the inheritance that we have, we are wealthy people. We are the seed of Abraham. Listen, we are wealthy, but the enemy likes to tell us we are not. And we follow that because we don't want to go deep. It will require you going deep. My God, no door is going to open for that person who is shallow at the shallow end. Or somebody will deceive you. But that person still would have received a thought. Let's move in. Let's try to get these ignorant, foolish people. Let's conquer. My God. I can see that they don't understand. Because there are people who will monitor you and know that you don't understand what's happening. Satan have his people that he use. So he says here, we capture the rebellious thoughts. But I want you to look at it from another, um, from the GNT, which is a good news translation. We soon finish. It says, here, remember these are just boosters. I'm boosting you in the word and I'm also boosting you in prayer. Amen. I'm encouraging you. So 2 Corinthians 10, we're still on that. It says to live right on a deeper level with God. You need deeper wisdom. You need deeper understanding. My God, somebody. Hallelujah. You need gnosis. That is the word for what? For not, for no. The no there is gnosis. Even you can put no as understanding. You need that understanding. And knowing is the same word. Gnosis. That's the Greek word. Gnosis. You need gnosis. You need to know the gnosis of, of, of who God is. You need to know the gnosis of the will of God for your life. Hallelujah, somebody. He said to live on a deeper level with God, you need gnosis. You hear that? To live right on a deeper level, not the surface level living where the slightest thing throws off. Not the surface level living where the slightest thing can cause you to curse out your brothers and sisters and be terribly atrocious. No. Not the surface living that everything, the first thought that you have is I'm done with God. I'm done with people. No. You want gnosis. That even if you say that, you come to a realization like, hey, I can't ever done with God. You know, the enemy will always capture your mind, capture you by feeding you thoughts. Then he isolates you and now he finishes you. 
To live right, you need what? Gnosis. You need a you need a deeper level of gnosis, a deeper level of wisdom. But so wisdom is a principal thing. You must get that, and you get that, you get the knowledge, but you say also get the understanding. So you need a deeper level of understanding. We perish for the lack of gnosis. My God, come on, somebody. Tell somebody. We the Bible tells us that if you notice the scripture tells us that we that we perish for the lack of what? Knowledge. That knowledge is talking about gnosis. We perish with a lack of gnosis. The people who build and is torn down because they didn't build because into the according to the God structure, according to the will of their life, is because they lack gnosis. Come on, somebody. Satan is against you or having gnosis. Satan is against you being built up on that knowledge. Hallelujah, somebody. He's against that knowledge of who you are and what God has ordained for you. It is preordained. God is not now working it out for you. It's already worked out. Come on, somebody. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Come on, Gwen Gwendolyn. Tell somebody. My God. Come on, Elder Dion. Tell somebody. My God. Tell them God already worked it out. It's already done. But the invisible enemy is what? Your thoughts. Hallelujah, somebody. My God. You know, Satan is against that. He's against that knowledge, that gnosis of who you are and what you have. Now, let's look at Romans eleven thirty three as we get ready to close here. It says, oh, how great are God's riches. My God, somebody. Oh, how great. How great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How great are God's riches, wisdom and gnosis. My God, how impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways unless we have what? Gnosis. Unless we have that deeper level of wisdom. Then we will continue to bombard our thoughts. He will continue to build a bridge of deception. He will continue to put that thing, that, that log in our minds. He will continue to speak. He will continue to have a place in our mind. In some of our minds, the enemy has a bed. He has throw cushions. He's laying comfortable. Come on, somebody. And some people's mind, the enemy already know what drink he's having today. He already know what he's going to feed you. He already know what link he's going to use. He already know what chains he's going to pull. He already know how to manipulate you because he already got your minds captured. When it is indeed that you should give the Lord your mind, the Bible says that we should have a sound mind hallelujah oh shana man deli ki andoro bo soto ko raha sata hallelujah somebody hallelujah somebody my god let's wrap up with this scripture let's go back your bible should have been open romans 12 2 and it says this is this is this is the antidote here do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and prove, approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Hallelujah, somebody. My God. So you see, you want to be able to know what God's good and perfect will is. But 2 Corinthians 10, 5 continues. I'm going back to the, N the NLT, which is the New Living Translation. And it says we take hold of every thought what are you going to do we take hold so this is what you have to do say lord in the name of jesus i take hold of every thought that is not of you and uproot it now in the name of jesus every thought be captured be captured be captured now by the power of god every thought that satan have put in my mind that's laying there like a log be captured now by the fire of god i uproot you now by the fire of god but we said to tear down those strongholds because they build strongholds in your mind. Say every stronghold of the enemy, in my mind, I tear you down by the fire of God now. Every stronghold of my mind be destroyed now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on somebody, say every stronghold of my mind be destroyed now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every stronghold of my mind that's placed by the devil about who I am, about us 
others, about my family, Masho, about my friends, about my business, Oko Ramashi, about my ministry, about my ministry leaders, about people that God has sent to me, every stronghold, about telling me that I'm this or I'm that, every stronghold, telling me to leave what God has given to me, go in a different direction, oh my God, say so every stronghold of my home, my marriage, my ministry, my life, my career, my children, every stronghold, say, say I capture you now with the power of God and I uproot you now in the name of Jesus. I break every stronghold now. Say, I break every stronghold now in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, be uprooted now in the name of Jesus. God didn't plant you there. Be uprooted now. God didn't plant you there. Be uprooted now in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, God didn't plant you there. Be uprooted now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. The enemy will cause you to be proud and rebellious and disobedient. He will cause you to be arrogant. He will speak some things and you will think you are moving on the right path. You don't realize you're moving on his path. That's all the time we have for today, guys. I told you I'm going to keep it to time. Hallelujah, somebody. If there's anything else, I know we can go a lot deeper on that. But remember, this is just a booster to get you started, to get you stirred up fired up that you can take these scriptures and meditate on them longer and see what God is going to speak to you. Father Lord God, pray with me. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for all Lord God that you have spoken today in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you Lord God. Father, from this day forth, I will pay attention to my thoughts Lord God. I renew my mind by your word Lord God. I would read Romans 12 too. I would read it Lord God. I will meditate on it Lord God. I would read 2 Corinthians 10. I would read it Lord God. I will meditate on it Lord God in the name of Jesus 2 Corinthians 10 5 you read it and meditate on it so Lord God I will let your word be the standard for my life in the name of Jesus hallelujah somebody I want you to ask yourself this question what are some of the thoughts that have encouraged from Satan that have not done anything about that's caused some problems in my life you can go back because you pray this morning you can go back and correct that if it is you need to apologize to somebody, do it. If it is you need to forgive somebody, do it. Don't think I'm sitting here saying, no, don't bring thoughts. But sometimes I have to be like, X, this is not from God. Or sometimes if you allow that thing, you have to go back and say, no, you got to be uprooted. Because it will come, the, the, the stronghold isn't built overnight. It's built in a, on a, by a process. So after a while, it is there. That's why it's called a stronghold. After a while, it's built up. So you have to now be able to destroy that. We pray this morning, but I want you to think, let the Holy Spirit show you what are some of those thoughts that you've held on to that is not from God and you allow it to rule and control your actions, rule and control your mouth, what you speak, what you do. Amen. So think on that and don't forget as we go, go out there and sow a seed of edification. That's a seed of life. Speak life. Prophesy to somebody. You shall live or not die. God has a godly inheritance for you. This thing that Satan said will kill you, it will not kill you. The Lord said he would take everything that the enemy meant for bad and turn it into good to please you, to lift you up and do a great thing in your life. God bless you, somebody. I love you guys so much, but that's all the time I have for today. I'll see you tomorrow on what? Testimony Thursday. I am so looking forward to that. So God bless you and I'll see you then. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe subscribe and please please like the videos if it's a blessing to you share the videos it's just a booster amen if not we'll have to spend an hour with you to even go further but that's what i got 30 minutes and so that's what i wanted to do only when the holy spirit zoop, went over i did but this week i decided you know i have to ensure that i stay my course so that i don't do something that i'm not led to amen so i love you guys so much have a great day and all my dear family please i pray peace over everyone that's watching this video i pray peace over your lives in the mighty name of jesus and all my dear family i love you so much and i'll see you soon god bless you bye